Hello, Integrated Math One. Welcome to lesson uh, E.1-3A. So we're on our third lesson of our Envision pilot. Um, of course, we're doing day one, right? That's where we're at right now. This is why it's part A. So we are on page 18. If you've got your book, you can pop that open. If not, you can see my screen as well. So here we have Nora. Nora drew a non-square rectangle. Then she drew the length of each side from end to end to make a line segment to represent the parameters. So she took this guy, and so she took the piece, 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 piece. She just lined them all up end to end. So this, of course, represents the length of our parameter. Good job, Nora. So I would like you to write an equation that represents the parameter of the model shown. Go ahead, hit pause, write it down, hit play to check your work. So um, I kept it simple. <laughs> I kept it simple. And I was like, OK, so my parameter so to write an equation. So my parameter, I'll use P for parameter, equals, well, I've got my length plus my width plus another length plus my width. Awesome. Good job. Um, hopefully you had something pretty similar. But yeah, I just length plus width plus length plus width. But you know, I could rewrite this, right? Can you rearrange the order of the sides so that you can represent the perimeter with a different equation? And is this equation equivalent to your first equation? So is there another way that you could write this formula? Hit pause, write down your thoughts, and then hit play when you're ready to check your work. All right. so. I can't move these around, but I did notice, I did notice that I had some like terms here, right? I had an L and an L, so I actually have two L's. And then I had a W and a W, so I actually had two W's. So I was like, oh, well then another way to write this equation would be P equals 2L plus 2W. Um, just another way of writing the same equation. Yay. So. How many different ways do you think you could express this relationship? And are any of them more useful than others? I don't know. I mean, I like this first way of writing it just because I can see all the pieces, like this plus this plus this plus this. But I like the second way of writing it because it's a little less work, and so it's a little more practical for me to use. Just a thought. So today, we're talking about literal equations and formulas, day one. So as I said, E.1-3A. So we're going to jump into example one here on page 18. So here's the deal. Janet wants to calculate the time it takes to earn a certain amount of interest on a principal amount in an investment with simple interest. What equation can she use? All right, if your head is spinning a little bit, let's just talk. When you put money into an account, it gains something we call interest. It's usually a percentage that they keep adding on to your account. Now, it does compound, but for our purposes, to keep it simple, we're just going to deal with simple interest. So what equation can she use? Well, we need a formula. A formula is an equation that states a relationship between one quantity and one or more other quantities. Now, you've used formulas before, but this is the official definition. How are these two quantities related to each other, or three quantities or four quantities? How are they related to each other? That is a formula. So I'm going to use the simple interest formula, which is I equals PRT, where I is the interest, P is the principal amount. Oh, and I misspelled it. That should be P-A-L. My bad. P is the principal. R is the interest rate. And T is the time. So the formula I equals PRT is what we call, I mean, yeah, it's a formula. But we actually also call it a literal equation. Because letters represent both variables and known constants. These aren't just random letters, right? These aren't just random variables. They represent something, right? I equals P times R times T. Well, I is my interest, which is equal to the principal amount times the interest rate times time, right? These aren't just letters. These aren't just variables. They mean something. They represent things that we know. So we're going to use this lovely equation. 
The only thing is, she's trying to calculate the time. I don't want this to say I equals. I want this to say T equals. So I need to solve this equation for T. I need to solve for T. That's what this means. I need to solve for T. Yeah. So remember that we use properties of equality to solve literal equations for a variable, just like we do linear equations. So the last couple of days we've been solving equations, right? We use inverse operations. You undo addition with subtraction. If you do it to one side, you do it to the other. We've been doing that already all week, but now we're going to keep doing it. And it doesn't matter that it's nothing but variables. I don't care. We're still going to do it. I need to get T all alone. I want to solve for T. So I need to get rid of both the P and the R. Now that P and R is being multiplied by T. How do you undo multiplication? Division. So I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by P and PR. Because, of course, the reason we do that is so that those will cancel out. That's why we do it. And now I know that I over PR equals T. Now I have the equation. So when she writes the equation this way, she can use what she knows. She knows the interest. She, right, she wants to earn a certain amount of interest. She knows the principal amount, right? She knows how much she's putting in the account. And she knows the interest rate. Um, and so now that she knows those things, she can just plug them in and calculate how long it's going to take to earn that much money. Mm, nice. So what if instead, what equation can Janet use to calculate the principal amount? So this is the try it number one down on page 18. Go ahead, hit pause, see if you can solve for P, and then hit play when you're ready to check your work. So I'm back to my equation, I equals PRT. The principal amount is P, so we're going to solve for P. Great, if I wanna solve for P, I need to get P alone. It's being multiplied by RT. We undo multiplication with division. And the reason we do that is because those will now cancel out, hooray. And now I can see that I over RT equals P. So if I have my interest, I have my rate, and I have my time, I can plug it in and figure out what the principal amount should be that I pop into the account. Yay. All right. Let's go to example two on page 19. Do you ever wake up late and realize you're going to have to bust it to get to where you're going on time? Yeah. I've never done that or do it on a regular basis. Hard to say. In half an hour, Sarah is meeting her friends at the lake six miles from her house. At what average speed must she ride her bike to get there on time? So she's going, oh, crud, I got 30 minutes to get there. Dang it, I got half an hour. So she needs to figure out how what her speed should be. So remember the distance formula? It's been a while, right? Distance formula, D equals RT, right? Distance equals rate, also known as speed. Ah. Distance equals rate times time, also known as speed. So we're going to solve the distance formula for R. We're going to solve it for R because that's what we want, right? What's her average speed? What should her rate be? All right, so remember that distance equals rate times time, so D equals RT. We do want to solve for R. Right now I have R times T. We undo multiplication with division, right? Okay, so that cancels out. So now I have R equals D over T, which is great, which is great, right? This is what I needed. To find her average rate of speed, I need to take the distance and divide by time. So fine, I can do that, I can do that. We know the distance is six miles, awesome. We know it's half an hour, so the time is 0 0.5. And then I'm going to grab my calculator. Yes, you just witnessed that, and I'm leaving it in the video, too, just for you guys. <laughs> grab your calculator, hopefully without flinging it and knocking yourself in the forehead. And go ahead and divide 6 divided by 0 0.5. You do get 12. 
Now, we do need to put units on this. If you recall, it was six miles, right? And it was half an hour, right? Ah, so Sarah needs to ride her bike at an average speed of 12 miles per hour to get to the lake on time. Hopefully there's no hills. She should be okay. You can do 12 miles an hour on a bike, unless there's a really big hill. Then you might have trouble. If it's downhill, it shouldn't be any issue at all. <laughs> so with that in mind, oh, hang on. I need to fix something. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Hang on. I need to fix something here. I have something that went a little bit off. I'm going to try that again. Do, 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 do. I'm going to fix it. Perfect. Okay, sweet. All right, so Sarah, again, she's always waiting until the last minute for stuff. So Sarah is going to the store 2.5 miles away. She only has 15 minutes to get there before they close. She keeps waiting the last minute. At what average speed must she ride to get to the store before they close? Hit pause, work this out, hit play when you're ready to check your work. Now, I've realized this is a rate problem again, right? So I can use the formula from before, right? We already figured out that R equals D over T. So I already have these things. All right, well, we know the distance is 2.5 miles. Great, that'll go in there for D. Now, be careful with the time. Notice it's 15 minutes. That's a quarter of an hour, right? So in this case, my T is not 15. It's 0 0.25, right? Because this is miles, but this is hours. Yeah, I don't want minutes down there. I want hours. We don't usually think, measure things in miles per minute. We usually measure our speed in miles per hour. So because it's a quarter of an hour, it's 0.25 hours. Again, grab the calculator without hurting yourself. And 2.5 divided by 0 0.25 is 10. We need to put some units on here and answer the question, at what average speed must you ride to get to the store before they close? Looks like Sarah needs to ride her bike at an average speed of 10 miles per hour to get to the store before they close. She can make it. She might wanna go a little faster though, cause I've, I've walked up to a store a minute before they closed and they told me they were closed and they turned me away. I did not get my burrito at the burrito factory that day. It was very sad. So, anyway, I hope you found this helpful. I hope you found this useful. And I'm sure there were moments you found entertaining. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.